My name is Minister Leon Banks, and you're watching Joe Linda Wade present. Just keep your head. been made possible by support from the Willie Mae Moore's Empowerment Foundation. I'm excited about being with you all this month of May. Yes. I, will be, yes. 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 I will be teaching on the purpose of the resurrection, the power of the resurrection, and the privilege because of the resurrection. Amen. The resurrection is a very, very important topic because if it had not been for the resurrection, None of this would be. Amen? Amen. I just said, if it had not been for the resurrection, yeah. none of this would be. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God made that explicitly clear yeah. to me when he gave me this here assignment. Amen. Amen. I want to start out by calling out a list of things that the resurrection is the only, have the only answer to. Before I do that, we must go in prayer. Amen. I want to lift up Sister Elaine, I want to lift up Sister Barbara. Uh, look like my two main armor bearers have been attacked in their health. So I want to lift them up. Uh, and if anybody else that's being attacked within this ministry, we lift them up. Amen? Amen. But them two right there for sure. Father God, in the name of Jesus. That name that is above every name. Yes. Hallelujah, yes. Jesus. Hallelujah. We come thanking you, O oh Lord, my God, for being God and just being God all by yourself. Yes. We thank you, O oh Lord, my God, for the individuals I just lift up to you right now in the name of Jesus. We understand because of the resurrection, Father God, we can call on thus thee, the healer, Father God, and we call on you today in the name of Jesus. We ask that you move, Father God, according to your spirit, oh Lord, my God. We ask that you touch, Father God, as only you know how to touch, Father God. You said you created us in our mother's womb. You, womb. you knit us together there. You know when we stand up, when we sit down, what we're going to say before we say it. So, Father, Father God, that let me know that there's a personalized thing going on here. Yeah. So I ask, Father God, that you minister according to your needs, to, according to their needs, Father God, in their health space. Yeah. I want to lift up, Father God, all the rest of the people, Father God, that's a part of this ministry here. Yeah. New Creation Binding and Loosening Ministries International, a ministry, Father God, that you called out for yourself, oh Lord, my God, I lift them up, Father God, in whatever they're going through, in their struggles, Father God, and in their joys, Father God. I just thank you, Father God, for each and every one of them. I thank you for the place that you're sending each and every last one of them. I thank you for the development of each and every last one of them. I thank you for the deliverance of each and every last one of them. I thank you for the protection of each and every last one of them. I thank you, oh Lord, my God, what you're doing for each and every last one of them in the name of Jesus. Jesus. We come blessing you, Lord, and just thanking you. Thank you, Father God, for this Bible study yeah. night that we're having. Thank you, O oh Lord, my God, for the sheep that you have called, the one that you are feeding, hand feeding them, Father God, for your glory. Thank you, Father God, for what they're doing with the information that they get. Thank you, Father God, that they're sharing it, Father God. Share the spiritual meal with somebody else. Oh, we thank you, O oh Lord, my God. We thank you for using them, Father God, for your glory. Hallelujah. Jesus. Yeah. Now, Father God, we ask that you bless this teaching tonight. Yeah. We want to lift up Sister Carmen. Yeah. She's stepping out in a new place tonight. Yeah. I ask, Father God, that you bless her over the airwaves tonight, yeah. Father God. Let what you place on her heart, let what she teach, Father God, let it save somebody, let it deliver somebody, let it turn somebody around, Father yeah. God. It's all for your glory, Father yeah. God. That she stepped into, she said, yes. Yeah to the call of this ministry right here. 
And we bless you for it, Lord, my God, in the name of Jesus. Now, Father God, we ask that you bless all those that are out there, Father God, in TV land. The ones, Father God, who you have that's looking at our program right now in the name of Jesus. I ask, oh Lord, my God, that they get a revelation, Father God. I ask, oh Lord, my God, that they too, Father God, be able to see past their self and see Christ, Father God. Let Christ stand before them. Oh, you move me up out of the way, oh Lord, my God. It ain't about Joe in the way. It's all about Jesus the Christ. So we bless you for him, Father. We love you, Father God, and we thank you, Father God, for your plan that you have for our lives. So I offer this prayer in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I made a list of things that the resurrection is the only one who have an answer for. Because we have to see how important the resurrection is. And one of the things that, I, that, that stood out to me, because I read a lot of newspaper and I look at a lot of TV. So that means these things are operating in the 21st century. Hallelujah. I, I lift up greed. Greed. The resurrection is the only answer for greed, for murder, for suicide. What about politics? Where men and women are tearing each other down as, as beasts instead of building their campaign for the people and around the people. What about marriages being attacked? Families being torn apart. Schools being torn apart. Prejudice. One race, one race talking about the next race, that one talking about that one, and they don't know that it's only one race, and that's the human race. Yeah. Uh, somebody picked that up this morning. Yeah. Yeah. What about police institutions? They're compromising their oaths. Uh -huh. The government's failing the people. These are the things that the resurrection is the only answer for. Wife swapping, husband swapping, yeah. disrespect is on the rise. We got drugs, guns, people losing their properties to swindlers, people being written off, neighbors not being neighborly no more. Uh -huh. Love one another, huh, well, that's been thrown out the window. We got hunger. We got children being used as whores and prostitutes. Yeah. We got children being raped and cast away. Police brutality, meaningless death, anger, hatred, rage, yeah. child abuse. All these things are happening right now as we speak. And the only answer to it is the resurrection. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. So it will make you want to know. I want to know about this resurrection. I want to know the purpose of it. I want to know the power of it. I want to know the privilege that's attached to it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless God for Jesus. Yes. When I was studying it, I got into a very, very emotional place because when I started understanding because he rose, I was able to rise. Y'all yeah. didn't hear me in here. Because he rose, I was able to rise. Because he rose, you rose. Because he rose, you rose. Because he rose, you rose. Be rose up out of whatever situation or circumstances. You got the ability to do it all because Jesus Rose. Yeah. 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 I said I gave you all this paper called The Power of the Resurrection. Uh -huh. And there you see two scriptures, Exodus 12 and 1 Corinthians 15. These are the scriptures that we're going to get deeper into because this is the introduction uh, lesson right here. When we meet back up next Tuesday, we'll go a little bit more deeper into it. Probably going to go into the book of Exodus and the Old Testament because I want you to see how things was covered up. And we're going to uncover it where you can see how it came to pass in the new T. Amen? Amen. 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 First Corinthians 15, we know that's the resurrection chapter because it talks about the resurrection of Christ, the resurrection of the body. And there's a lot of things that people need to know because when death come upon us, we as Christians are just as hopeless as people who don't have no hope. Yeah. That's true. So you got to understand the power that lies with the resurrection. Amen? Amen. And it'll have you to see God in a whole nother space, on a whole nother level. Yeah. I ask the question, how many of you wish you had been living to witness the resurrection of Jesus Christ? 
Amen, amen, amen. Since you're, you're not, you're, well, no, I ain't gonna call on you. I'm gonna let you just answer for yourself. But the ones who put their name up, their hands up, I wanna ask, why does it matter that Jesus rose from the dead? Somebody, anybody, just one person. Why does it matter that Jesus rose from the dead? Go ahead. It matters uh, that the Lord had rose. Was rose from the dead so we can have hope and and and, and uh, be uh, born over again. That's a great answer. That's a great answer. What does it mean to you personally? I need an individual. What does it mean to you personally that he rose from the grave? Come on, talk to me, somebody. Go ahead, Sister Carmen. Him rising from the grave means that I have the the uh, ability or the the privilege of salvation. I have Amen. Been able to receive the gift Amen. of salvation because Amen. he rose. Somebody got that? Did yeah. somebody get that? That's the way you got salvation because he rose. Amen? Amen. And then they let the third question. That's a ooh wait. It asks, what, what are you willing to give up in order to know Christ? Now I ain't gonna, you ain't got to answer that. You can you that's a personal thing. That, that's something that God and you and God y'all get before one another and you let him know the things that you are willing to give up in order to know him. DYK means, do you know? Do you know without the risen Savior, there's no Christian faith? Hmm? Do you know because of the resurrection, God has accepted the Savior's sacrifice and we are forgiven? Do you know Christ has destroyed death? And has given us a living hope. Amen. Do you see so far the power of the resurrection? Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. These artifacts you see here are things that was associated with the resurrection. We had he had to go through the cross first. He had to there had to be a crucifixion. There had to be a death. And then I got this, the communion up here, which is the supper. That's something that we do with the Lord every day. We know that was a part of the the whole gist of uh, him before he even went to the cross. Then we got the whip. Well, we know he was whipped. Well, we, almost every inch of his life with the blocks and there go the Bible which came from it and we got the flowers to symbolize and represent that the resurrection is real. Uh -huh. right. Hallelujah Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, I have scriptures on here when you all go home. I want you all to read your scriptures and you can write, take notes and put what you want to put down there on that paper. But right now I want you to go to the scripture Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. I want you to turn to Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. Because God rose, I can rise. That means you can rise above anything. There's nothing, nothing that you can't rise above. We're talking about Jesus, the Christ. See, some of us don't know him. Yes. We know about him, yes. but we don't know him because if we know him, then we know we can rise. Matter yes. of fact, we're going to do it. Yes. We're going to do yes. it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. And it reads from the Bible that I have, and you can read along with me. I want to know Christ. Yes. To know the power of his resurrection and participation in his suffering. Becoming like him in his death. Mm, oh, it's a lot going on there, y'all. Yes, it it's a lot going on right there. Wow. Right now, we can see, this is Brother Paul talking, yes. okay? Paul is speaking from his new life in Christ. Hallelujah. Because previously, as you, if you read up, you'll find in verses 4 through 6, it shows how Paul had confidence, but his confidence was in his flesh. Yes. Uh -huh. It was in all his accomplishments. Yes. You know, we got that going on here today, yes. where people are really caught up in their own accomplishments. Yes. So you don't have confidence, really, in Christ like you should, right? Everybody knows that Paul went to the best school. Yes. Paul gave his own, matter of fact, let's look at Paul. Paul gave his own um, resume. Where, where, where's that found there? Verse 5 and 6. Go over there, verse 5 and 6. Paul said, let me tell you something. He said, someone else think they have reason to put confidence in the flesh. I have more. Number one, I was circumcised on the eighth day 
of the people of Israel. I'm of the tribe of Benjamin. I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews. In regard to the law, he said, I'm a Pharisee. Uh -huh. As for zeal, I persecuted the church. As for righteousness, based on the law, I'm faultless. Yeah. He gave his own resume. Uh -huh. You know, you got people saying, well, I went to Harvard School. Uh, then I went to the School of Theology on So So Street. Then I went down there and I went up and I got my BSS. So understand me, but I'm coming against that. But a lot of people too caught up in their degrees to the point where they don't see Christ no more. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. This is a perfect example of somebody who was caught up in his, his own self, his own flesh, that he didn't see Christ, but all his road to Damascus. Yeah. On his way to persecute the church. Yeah. He had a visit uh -huh. from Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. How many of you all was on your way to do something and all of a sudden, just all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you get a visit yeah. from the Holy Ghost. Yeah. All of a sudden, you know, you can't do what you used to do no more. That's the actor. Paul said here in verse 7, but whatever were gains to me, I now consider it loss. Somebody would say he considered it as dumb. Uh-huh. That, that's, that's what it is now. See, when you really connect with Christ, things start being so significant and important now. You stop being Mrs. Significant or Mrs. Significant. Yeah. You stop being Mr. Important and Mrs. Important. Yeah. Christ wound up being the thing. He wound up being the thing. He wound up being the man. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Uh, we got to get past ourselves in order to get to Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Paul had to get past himself in order to get to Christ. Yeah. Yeah. He said, I consider it a loss. All of it. What you want? What you want, God? That's when I ask you the question. What would you give up to know Christ? What would you sacrifice? Would you sacrifice your family? Would you sacrifice your so-called friends? Would you sacrifice things to get to know Christ? Paul said, I consider it all a loss. It's nothing to me. Hallelujah, Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah, Jesus. And then when you look at it now, he said, I want to know Christ. This is what Paul is saying. And, and God had me to go and he had, he said, you have to explain the words because see, they'll look at it as being something that they speak in the English language today when it's more powerful and impactful than that. When he said, I want to know Christ, and you look at the key word, which is know. All right, I don't talk Greek and I don't talk Hebrew, but I can spell it for you, and then you can go ahead and try to symbolize it for yourself. But I can tell you what it means. When he said, I want to know Christ, he's saying that in the Greek, they said it means allow. I want to be allowed to know him. Uh -huh. it, it said, be aware of. I want to be aware of everything that's about him. See, this here is an intimate place. This is yeah. how he wants to know Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yeah. It, it said it's, it's connected with feeling. Yeah. Having a feel for, for Christ and for the things of Christ. That's when you start considering these things as being a loss. I want to, and then one another word, it said I want to understand him. Yeah. Woo. And the only way you're going to understand Christ is getting in that word. Yes, hold yes, your yes, word up. Hold yes. your word up. Yes. That's the only way you're going to yes, understand. Yes. You got to get in that word if you really want to know Christ. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, yes. I remember when I was uh, okay, okay. in the uh, penitentiary, in the white penitentiary. I didn't know this scripture was even in the Bible. But I remember that I stood before the Holy Spirit stood before this voice that was speaking to me. I had been in jail before. I had went to the churches. I got saved. I went out. I went to the church on the outside, which was
was, I was looking for a feeling then. Uh -huh. See, and when I went to the churches on the outside, they didn't feel like the church on the inside. Yeah. And, and so what it did, it just got me away from it. And, and I moved, and I wound up moving, and I caught myself back to where I was. Y'all remember they talking about Peter, how he went back to fishing? Uh -huh. I went back to fishing out of the boat. I was fishing. So this one here, the voice that took me to jail had to hold my hand and take me in there. This one here is when I got before him and I told Jesus, I told God, I was talking to God, I said, God, listen, you're going to have to make him real to me. Because uh -huh. I was tired of it. Yeah. You know, you get tired of the swinging door sometimes. You know, you want to change. You want to do the right thing. I was tired. I said, I need you to make him real to me. Uh huh. Well, the Bible did say, ask anything according to my will. Yeah. He said, I hear you, and when I hear you, it's done. Yeah. I didn't know that scripture was in the Bible either. Yeah. Because the paper that you all have now, March the 31st, 2002, is when he made his introduction to me. Okay, you want to know him? I'm going to introduce you to him. When I started opening up the Bible, Brother Brandon, and when I started reading the Gospels, it's like I was sitting there watching a movie. Yeah. That's how real he made that thing to me. I was feeling all the things things that was going on within this book. That book became alive to me. And March the 31st, which was Resurrection Sunday in 2002, that's when he visited me and he said, you get paper, you get pen, you're going to write until I tell you to stop. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know what type of journey I was getting ready to go on, but I said what Paul said. I said, I want to know I want to know him. I didn't know about the power of the resurrection at that particular time. I was a youngster walking in the Lord. I want to know Christ. I want to know Christ. I want to know Christ. All you have to do is ask him. Hallelujah. He'll make himself real to you. I tell you. Well, you'll look at yourself. And when you look at yourself, you're humbly bow down yes. and say, forgive me. Yes. Forgive me yes. for my thought life. Yes. Forgive me yes. for everything that I have done. I'm telling you, when you look in the mirror and you, when you look at it, and that's what Jesus is. He's a mirror. When you look in it. Yes. And I can understand when they said, oh, wretched man that I am. Uh, yes, yes. I'm not even going to get offended because it called me a word. I didn't even know about the resurrection yet. He was teaching me about the crucifixion. Yes. See, what, 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 what I didn't understand and what a lot of people don't understand that I'm going to make clear today is that when the crucifixion comes, when he comes and he comes to crucify you, it's not you he crucifying. It's that sin. Yeah. It's that sin that he got to crucify. You see what he did with his own son. He wouldn't tolerate none of that sin that was upon him. What makes you think he don't tolerate our own sin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has to crucify the sin. Right. Jesus. That's why when we get in Exodus, you're going to be able to see how God had that thing all set. It's got to go. It's got to go. Every time we think it's an attack on us. It's not on you. It ain't personal. It's on that sin that you in. It's on that thing that's got to be done away with. God is holy, y'all. We serve a holy God. We serve a God. We serve a God who went from glory, yes. walked this earth, yes. walked all the way to Calvary, yes. beat to every very inch of his life, yes. spit on, yes. got thorns all up in his head, yes. bleeding all over the place. Yes. Yes. In the garden of Gethsemane, look, that's where he almost. Come on. <laughs> now, don't we get in that place where we almost? Yeah. Yes. You know, it's like God got us up in something that we be like, God, listen. Uh -huh. 
Uh-huh. If I don't have to go through this now, because see, I know you, God. I know you in control, God. If, we, if, if I don't have to go through this, but if you don't go through it, if you don't go through it and you never come out, you stop in the middle of the process. That's just like me putting a cake in the oven and taking it out before it's done. Come on now. You are who you are because God allowed you to go through yes. something. Yes. No, it ain't nice why we in it. Go on, Jesus, and sympathize, but you're going to read about the Garden of Gethsemane. Yeah. He asked you, would y'all sit on there and pray with me for about an hour? Yeah. Just pray. I'll be back. That's right. yeah. He come back, they came back. Yeah. Y'all can't even stay up an hour yeah. because this thing was real to Jesus, yeah. see? People don't know how real when you die to your flesh. They don't know how real that thing is. Yeah, it's nice out. Yeah, I want to go and I want to kick it with. I just, yeah, I, I don't know. Should I go to Bible study or should I go over here to the barbecue? Bible study, barbecue. Yeah. 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 It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a stretch. Yeah. Woo. Come on now. Come on now. But because I want to know Christ. Yeah. 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 I'm going to Bible study. Yeah. I'll barbecue later. Yeah. I prayed for my daughter Barbara. Y'all see me lift her? Yeah. I didn't think she was coming in because she had just went to the doctor. So she was tired. But she made it. Yeah. She knew to stay home. Yeah. Pastor, I don't feel good. Amen. Amen. Elena, like it, she couldn't even be here. Pastor, that's okay. Go ahead. But pastor, ain't no but. Go ahead. Yes. Let God heal you. Yes. See what I found out? God reveals things so that he can heal those things. Yes. Uh, that's right. see, if he didn't reveal some of the stuff that was going on with our bodies, true. he couldn't heal them. This is true. We'll never know. I bless God for the resurrection because of, listen, when Christ was living and walking the earth, that wasn't going to save you. That's right. That wasn't it. That didn't do it. That's right. That was a part of the purpose, part of the plan, but that didn't do it. You heard Jesus say the exact word, when I am lifted up, uh -huh. then I'll draw all men to him. Jesus had to go down yes, he did. to come up. Amen. Now we can come up. Yeah. Now we can come. Thank you, Lord. Would you say it again, brother? Jesus. Come on. Jesus. Jesus. Pull out the March 31st. I'm going to take you in that cell with me. And we're going to read. I don't see him doing all of them. I'm just going to read. Wait. Tell me to read that. I hope you got an ink pen or pencil. I'm going to have you to underline when... Uh, You'll see that this is somebody who, understand, I turned myself in December 31st, 2001. Mm -hmm. They put me in the White Penitentiary in January 2002. Mm -hmm. I told you what was going on between me and God. I wanted to know him. Yes. This took place in March 2002. Nice. I was in and out of church, but I didn't sit there as a student. But that word, you go to church and you like you had your kids in, don't think that word going nowhere. Amen. When you see some of these scriptures that I don't put down here, they came from when I was going in eating the word of God with hair on in me, while I was rolling wine in me, beer was in me, mama, the devil, the foolishness was in me, but it could not take the word away from me. Yeah. Yeah. That's how powerful this word. 